Hey guys, welcome to another video and today I'm quickly showing you Logic Remote working with GarageBand. It does work with GarageBand as well, but it just has cut down features on the mixer. Okay, so I'm capturing the iPad showing the Logic Remote via this QuickTime player overlay and there's GarageBand behind. Now, it crashes and seizes up a lot, um, which is possibly because I'm doing this capture using the QuickTime player, but anyway, whatever. So here we are. Um, Logic Remote with GarageBand. Now we're in Mixer View at the moment. Yeah, Mixer View. All right, there's the mixer. Um, all you get is fader and pan. Double tap to reset, double tap to reset, and a master fader, double tap to reset. You get mutes, you can have multiple mutes going on, and you can unmute them individually, or you can tap on the master mute to unmute all mutes. You can have multiple solos going on. And again, you can unsolo them individually or tap the master solo button there to unsolo all solo tracks. Right? I have this grey block across the top here, which I can drag to scroll up and down my tracks to find the tracks that I want. And if I tap on the bottom coloured block title of any track, it will select that track and the equivalent track in GarageBand changes to match. Okay. One other thing, if you've got show automation, if you've got track automation working, then at the top of each channel has an automation button, like that. Okay, let's just turn that off. Okay. Um, now, here we show, we have the, the bars and beats indicator showing us where the playhead is in GarageBand, and the title of the selected track underneath. To the left and right is arrows. If I touch the left or right arrow, I'm going up the tracks, and the equivalent track in GarageBand is also selected, obviously, or down the tracks, like that. Okay. Other stuff. If I tap on the title of the selected track, like when I'm using the Logic Remote with Logic, it takes me into that view, which slides down, which is the bars and beats, showing me where I am in the song. Okay, now there's the cycle range, and well, like when you're using this Logic Remote with Logic, all I can do is turn the cycle range on and off, then touch the cycle range, adjust the end and start, and then drag it around to be wherever I want it to be. But I can't drag on the striped area to create a new cycle range. Okay. Now, the playhead is always fixed right in the middle like that, so if you want to record or play from a particular position, you slide the background to line it up with the playhead. Now the playhead is at bar 25. So if I hit play, it will play now from bar 25. Or if I want to record from bar 25, I position bar 25 under the playhead, hit record, the playhead will back up to bar 24, I'll get a one bar count in and it will drop in to record on bar 25. Here we go. And into record. And I always get a click count in. But if I want the metronome to keep clicking while I'm recording, I activate the metronome. Now when I hit record, it will back up one bar, I'll get a one bar click count in, and it will go into record at bar 25, but it will keep clicking over the record. Two, three, and into record, but this time with a click. Okay, there's that. To hide this area, we just tap on the title of the selected track again. Okay, so that's your mixer, that's all it is. I mean, when you're using Logic Remote with Logic, in this empty column here, you've got buttons to select your plugins, to see and edit your plugins, your MIDI plugins, your sends, etc. But we don't get any of that with GarageBand, just the basics, right? All right, so that's the mixer. Um, there's the cog wheel there to go into your master settings and other settings for whatever you've got selected. Um, there's your transport and there's your views arrow. That brings in the different views. We're currently in mixer view. And that tray icon there is to bring in the channel strip preset library to change the preset of whatever track you've got selected. I can change to a different type of synth or change to a completely different instrument, whatever I like. Okay. Okay, um, let's look at the other views. So the top view, smart controls and keyboard. It says smart controls and keyboard because I'm in a keyboard or synth type instrument. I get the smart controls at the top and a keyboard underneath to play. Okay. And that's the same for any synth or keyboard. You get smart controls across the top. 
and keys underneath to play that instrument. And they're instant response keys and they're velocity sensitive if the instrument that you've selected is velocity sensitive. All right, uh, there's Alchemy, you've got two pages of smart controls. There's your performance and XY pads controls and there's your transform pads, same as in Logic. Okay, here is a classic analog pad. So, um, in the middle here, we see this thing that says glissando. If I press and hold a key and drag up and down the keys, I get glissando. I can swipe across and choose scroll. If I press and hold a key and then drag left, right, I'll, I'll be scrolling the keyboard to a different part of the keyboard. Like that. Or if I set it to pitch, I can do this kind of thing. Which is pretty cool. Okay. So when you've got a keyboard display underneath, you can set the scale to be any notes you want. So you're only playing the notes you want. You can activate the arpeggiator. You can change the different keyboard views, smaller or bigger keys. Right. You've got a sustain latch there. When you press a key, it will just keep playing. So in the case of a polysphonic synth, you can press a key, press a key, press a key, and they'll all just keep playing until you de-latch sustain. And there's your octaves up and down there. Okay. Oh. Now, if you are using a guitar or bass instrument, then that display becomes called smart controls and fretboard. Right, the smart controls and basically gives you smart controls at the top and some type of playing medium underneath to play the instrument. And now we're looking at it for a bass. And we can actually play the notes on the fretboard. And again, you get the ability to set the scale that you want. Smart controls at the top. For a guitar, we get six strings. And again, you can set the scale. Um, with some types of strings you'll get a string display underneath um, really that's just if we go with the smart strings let's choose that smart strings <coughs> then <coughs> I get that underneath and again I can set the scale okay but all other strings like just regular strings you just get the keyboard underneath Right. Okay, so that's smart controls and keyboard or smart controls and fretboard for fretted instruments. And then finally, if we choose a drum track, any type of drum track, right, whether it's track number four, track number three, track number two, uh, there is a drummer track. Now, sadly, just like with Logic, when you've got a drummer track selected, there is no drummer editor to edit the drum patterns, which to me is pointless. Because the whole point of drummer patterns is you have to have the drummer editor to edit the patterns. But if you've got a drummer track like this, then that display is called Smart Controls and Drum Pads. And it will seize up now. You watch every single time when I go to the drummer track and activate this views thing, it seizes up and I can't get out of it. There's no way out of it. It's seized up. And I have to close Logic Remote, open it again, and hopefully it will reconnect. Oh, there we go. So Smart Controls and Drum Pads for a drummer track, and you can bash out, you can bash out patterns. Um, if it's an electronic drum kit, same thing. It's called Smart Control and Drum Pads, and it's seized up again. Look, I don't believe it. It seizes up every damn time on drummer tracks. I've got to close it, open it again. It's a nightmare. Now, I don't know if that's because I'm capturing with this quick time play, but every time on drum tracks, when you bring that views menu in, for the first time, it seizes up, right? So here we are on a drum, uh, an instrument track with an, an acoustic kit. And again, you get pads underneath. So the title of the display, the view is called Smart Controls and Drum Pads for any type of drum, whether acoustic or electronic. So if I switch this to electronic drums, it's still drum pads, right? Okay, so that's that view. Smart controls and either pads, fretboard or keys underneath to play the selected instrument. But sadly, no drummer 
pattern editor. Okay, then the second view then currently says drum pads because I'm on a drum track. If I switch to an instrument track, keyboard type thing, it's whoop, the second view is called chord strips. All right, chord strips. But if I'm on a drummer track, I get drum pads. You get full pads, but without the smart controls at the top. And for a drummer track, again, it's called drum pads. All right, but for any pitch instrument, that second view is called chord strips. So if we switch to a polyphonic instrument, come on, come on, come on. See, you just set up the cogwheel, edit chords, set these ladders, these strips to be any chord you want. The, the variety is huge. You can set up any chord that you want, any damn chord, right? And then you tap in the different blocks working down to play that chord down the different positions in, in terms of working down the octaves and the three grey bottom ones are bass notes. And again, if you activate sustain, it will just hold that chord. Like that. Okay. So you get that ladder type display for all synths when you're in this view called strips, unless it's a drum instrument, in which case you get drum pads. Now if you switch to a bass, it's a slightly different display. It's still called chord strips, but with basses and guitars you get the strings. With basses you arrange the chords you want on the strips and then the notes of the, of the bass are playing the notes of that chord, the primary notes of that chord. D minor, A minor, etc. If it's a guitar, you get this display for the chord strips. If you tap on the arrow t tips at the top above the top thinnest string, it will strum with a fast strum for you. Or you can actually strum the strings yourself. And this is brilliant if you don't play guitar. You set up the chords you want and you just go. You know, it, it's, it's really good for getting strum things down if you don't play a guitar. Far, far, far easier than faffing around trying to pencil in chords um, on, on, on the actual program. All right, so that's your um, chord strips. Just finally to show you, here we are on string ensemble. I get regular white chord strips, but if I change that to smart strings, I get the smart strings display. The same as in Logic when you select smart strings, it just doesn't work well. You drag, you press and drag and it's like you're bowing the strings. But I can't, you know, I, I just don't see how you bring in the bass end of the strings. Etc. It doesn't work very well, just like in Logic it doesn't work very well. Okay, so you got that. All right, but for regular strings it works great. Bring in sustain. Etc. All right, so that's that. Um, now. That's the chord strips or drum pads or drum kit uh, display because if you're in, let's just step up just to show you this last thing. Here we are on a drummer track, track number one, it's a drummer track. So my display, oh, oh yeah, wait a minute, that's a drummer track, an electronic drummer track, so I get drum pads. But if I switch it to a acoustic drum kit right now that display is called drum kit and you get the kit to hit and that's the same whether it's a drummer track with an acoustic drum kit on or an instrument track with 
but currently it's got an electronic kit on so that just that view is called drum pads you get full pads and no no smart controls but if i change it to an instrument track with an acoustic kit on now that view is called drum kit the same as for a drummer track with an acoustic kit on and you bash out the patterns right that's that okay that's that. what else we got we've got the key commands Except you just get only two pages in when you're using Logic Remote. With Logic, you get multiple pages. I can tap on any empty pad and install a key, a key command there. Down at the bottom, just like in Logic, I get a bunch of commands down here, all pertaining to transport. Okay, if I scroll across here and I bring in with the main cogwheel edit key commands, I can now and that thing drops down saying I'm editing key commands, I can tap on a key and hold and drag it to a different empty position or swap it with another pad and they swap like that. We'll come back. Come on. Come on. Put it back there and put that one back there. Or I can tap in an empty pad and install a key command or tap and let go. You just tap and let go fairly quickly tap and let go and I can remove that key command or install a different key command to replace the one that's in that block when I'm finished I do done that's your key commands I don't find them that useful myself to be honest <coughs> because I mean well, they might be useful I suppose <coughs> <coughs> pardon me um, but no. now there's one other thing if I'm in any type of display other than mixer or key commands like let's go back to this Choose a different track. Let's choose a keyboard sound. This third icon appears here, the same as when you're using Logic Remote with Logic. And it's when you tap that, it drops down a thin strip at the top, which should have key command blocks in it. But in the case of GarageBand, it's completely empty. I don't know why. Okay. Then finally, we've got our master control wheel or settings there. Bring it and we have access now to undo and redo. Why they hide them inside this cogwheel, undo and redo, I don't know, because <laughs> I've said this before when we're looking at this logic remote being used with logic. There's clearly space here and here to put an undo and redo button there, which is much easier, but there it is in the cogwheel. Undo and redo. You can create a new track, audio, software instrument, or drummer track. You can duplicate the selected track. You can go into your tempo and signature settings, and you can set your tempo via tap tempo if you want, or drag it. Set your time signature, key signature, and all that. There's a velocity range thing here that you can drag around. To change the range, you're supposed to pinch, but to be honest, it's very, very fiddly to do that. Okay, and that's your lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just cut down a bit. But the smart controls and keyboard, these are absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, because... Let's go to this basic polysynth, because the keys are, if you've got a velocity sensitive instrument, therefore these keys are velocity sensitive, right? Um, the smart controls are pre-mapped to, to key parameters of the instrument, so it's really easy for me to take off the reverb, add delay. If I want to change the delay settings, so yes, I've got to do that on GarageBand here, but I can, you know, I can change the filter here, you know. It's it's all pre-mapped. So there's no need, like, with a hardware controller to faff around mapping things. That's, it's really good, and the keys are great. The instant response and where the instrument is velocity sensitive, they are velocity sensitive. Yeah, it's all good stuff. So the smart controls and playing medium underneath, whether it's keys, pads, or a fretboard, they're brilliant. And the mixer is kind of useful, but the chord strips are massively useful. The fact you can just set the chords up that you want. Uh, let's go back to just take that delay off. See, all I do is go here, take the delay off, go back to my chord strips. I can set these chords up to be any chords I want. Right, you don't have to be able to play. You don't have to be able to. You don't have to touch the keyboard and, and hold those chords down. Set the chords you want up. And it's easy. It's as easy as that. It's brilliant stuff. So yeah, you know. And then you've got your um, 
key commands, which, you know, they might be useful if you can be bothered to set them up with the key commands that you want, maybe, you know, but I just think they're maybe not that useful. Yeah. So there it is. Logic Remote working with GarageBand, and it's exactly the same, other than the mixer, which is cut down. If you don't know how to use GarageBand uh, that well, check our channel. There are lots of reviews, uh, tutorials on GarageBand. I've done a couple of videos showing you how to create a song from start to scratch all the way through, and so many people in the comments have said, you know, oh my God, this is exactly what I was looking for. Finally, someone shows a simple A, B, C, how to make a song from start to finish in GarageBand. If you want to see all that, and there's other GarageBand tutorials on our channel, just search for GarageBand on our channel. There's tons of uh, tutorial content, tons, right? Um, and incidentally, Apple have written to me. One of the development team wrote to me privately and said, we really like what you're doing with your Logic and Apple. Uh, garage band tutorials you know keep it up and all the rest of it you know um yeah so there you go logic remote for garage band uh i hope that's useful um any comments any questions uh, just add them below the video or whatever see ya